All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from, I was going to say sunny San Diego. It's a bit gloomy today, actually. But I am delighted to be to welcome from central New York, Scott Greats. How are you doing, Scott? Hey, John. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, central New York. I, I say central because when people hear New York, they automatically think New York City. I'm actually yeah. closer to Canada but a uh, beautiful part of the country and excited to be here with you and share with your audience today. Where about to you close to Rochester or is it that area or? Well, further east, uh, right between Syracuse and Albany. Oh, Syracuse and Albany, wow, right up the top. Yeah, 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 excellent. And uh, Scott's a visionary entrepreneur and a testament to the power of strategic relationship marketing with a career that spans the founding of multiple seven-figure businesses, including the national recognized insurance agencies in a real estate portfolio. You've also written the Amazon bestseller, Essential F-Words for Teens, and your upcoming guide, Referrals Done Right. It showcases your expertise in nurturing relationships. Uh, you also have your own podca uh, uh, podcast, and you do talks, and you've done, you have an upcoming TEDx talk, is that right? Yeah, yeah, so I did it. Um, did it. I didn't realize it takes a couple months before they release it. Hopefully, uh, by the time this releases, uh, <laughs> That talk will be out, but uh, yeah, kind of neat. Excellent. And what we're going to talk about today is scaling small business through relationship marketing. And I guess the obvious place to start, Scott, is just to define relationship marketing for people, because I think, you know, in the old days, people used to, you know, they used to just be marketing. And now there's all sorts of different types of marketing that I think sometimes people get confused. Yeah, really, th th this is referrals, um, but referrals is kind of gotten this cringy feel to it in, in this uh, modern world. And so now I prefer introductions or relationship. Uh, and then when we talk marketing specifically, when I think of marketing from a traditional standpoint, it's your TV ads, your streaming ads, your SEO, your billboards. And so really the relationship marketing takes this digitally distracted world and everyone doing everything the same way and in mass volume and doing it cold and really brings the human element back to it. Uh, and, and that's what we've become very strategic and intentional with. Yeah. And I think that's so, uh, that, that people element, I think that's so critically important because as AI comes in and, and as just as technology in general, we, we have a tendency to start losing sight of the human, right? The person at the other end of whatever that digital interaction is or that tech technology enabled interaction. And I think you're right. Uh, you're not going to get those much sought after referrals if you don't build a relationship first. And I think nowadays, given, given how quickly, you know, given how networked we are, like you don't want to give a, a referral just off the bat if you don't, if you're not, if you don't trust the person, right? Yeah, so you're spot on there, right? So as I say all the time, the referrals are earned. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the line, we just feel like we're entitled to a referral or you know, we, we've earned the right to ask before we really have. So really the system starts with uh, being a value-driven enterprise. Uh, and so that people know you, they, they like you, they trust you, and you know, they're excited to tell their friends and family about you. But there's a natural order to that. You know, mm -hmm. in, in relationships, when we think about like romantic relationships, you, you can't go on your first date and propose before the entree comes. Mm -hmm. Right. It would be weird. And, but we do that in the business world where it's all about John. And we have a great conversation and interaction and maybe, you know, we do some business together. And then I immediately go to, hey, John, you know, can you introduce me to, to your friends or family or someone? And then it gets all weird. Uh, and yeah. so this whole process is all about doing it the right way, which is taking the time to cultivate the relationship um, and understand that it has to be consistent and that it's going to take a while uh, to get mm -hmm. to the point where, where you're you're worthy of, of the ask. And, and part of that, too, Scott, is. Uh... Is, is that idea of, you know, people often do initiatives in companies like, oh, let's get referrals. So salespeople reach out, blast everybody, say, oh, could you, you got anybody else who you think would be, you know, interested in our product or service? So you're basically saying, hey, hey, Scott, do the work for me. 
Go right. figure, go find people for me, right? And then when you, you know, when you don't come back immediately, it's like, ah, forget Scott, he's got no referrals. And that's what people tend to do. They tend to do a one cold outreach like that, you know, to their customers say, can you give me a referral? And then the customer's like, well, I can't think of anyone. And then you go, okay, forget that. Yeah, you're so spot on. It, it The words that, that make me cringe are, well, I already tried that. Or, mm -hmm. or, you know, it didn't work. And it's like, well, how long did you try it? And mm -hmm. how did you go about it? Uh, because to your point, John, that, that, Hey, we need referrals. So we're going to blast everyone with an email or make all these cold calls, which are weird and out of left field. And then we don't get any, and we go, ah, referrals don't work. <laughs> so how can you, so how can you set it up so that it's an elegant and a natural process as opposed to being just another kind of campaign? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing is to identify, we call them key relationships. So who are the, the key relationships or the referral partners that you seek? These are people that are in parallel industries to you. So I'm in insurance. So, so as an example, my key relationships would be realtors, uh, mortgage brokers, car dealers, attorneys. These are people that are already working with my potential customers. Mm -hmm. They already have the relationship with my potential customers. And so, you know, now I want to, instead of trying to coldly get in front of 10,000 potential customers, I want to get in front of 100 key relationships. So the first step is identifying who those people are. It's the old Aesop's fable of the, the goose and the golden egg. Right. So what's more important, the golden egg that the goose lays or is it the golden egg or the goose itself? Right. And so this process really just focuses on the geese, if you will. Right. Um, and, and so obviously with Pipeliner, you know, CRM. Right. And so what we do is we say instead of having a CRM dedicated towards uh, the, the eggs, the potential mm -hmm. people that, that, you know, prospects, we're going to have a CRM set up for the key relationships. So the first thing is identifying them. The next thing is, you know, now we want to create a strategic and intentional systematic approach to consistently showing up every four weeks. Mm -hmm. And so, John, if you're one of my key relationships, I might show up out of the gate and it's all about you. This whole process is all about you. Right. We never can ask you for anything. And I'm just going to figure out what's going on with your business and, you know, what obstacles are you facing and, and how could I potentially help you, John, with, with Pipeliner? Uh, and, and really just it's all about data and asking questions and, and entering that into our system and then figuring out, all right, four weeks from now, what am I going to do? And that might be something as simple as a handwritten card. John, it was great meeting with you a month mm -hmm. ago uh, based on our conversation, blah, 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 blah. And we enter something we learn. Uh, we connect on social right? or, or maybe I pop yeah. in with an email four weeks later. Um, maybe I leave you a five star Google review. Um, you know, maybe there's some sort of collaboration down the road where, where we can work together or I can step in and help you, your company, mm -hmm. your employees. Gift giving is a huge piece of this, but thoughtful gift giving, not your traditional. I'm going to drop off, you know, my company pens or a, my company hat and ask you to promote mm -hmm. my business for me. Right. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you something that that I know you are going to like something personal that every time you look at it, you remember Scott gave this to me. Uh, and so really, it, it's just this ongoing process um, that that we continue to show up, right? Marketing is just top of mind awareness. Yeah. When, when you need an insurance uh, question answered or a product or a service, are you going to call the person who, you know, spammed your email or, or you saw a TV <laughs> commercial? Or are you going to call the person who's who's showing up consistently serving you every four weeks? And, and that's really, uh, you know, with the, the core of what we do. Yeah, and and I think that's a, I think that's really important what you laid out there because again, even when you said even when you're you're bringing value all the time, and so that's compounding with the person or the people that you're dealing with, or you're continuing bringing them value, and and therefore you know you're creating that reciprocity situation where they'll feel like oh okay yeah I can I can help this guy. I, I just have to go back to what you said about the gifts though because it's so funny. Is like um, I always laugh. Is like when you send logoed stuff to people, especially like logo wear hats and T-shirts. All you're doing is giving them gardening clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. They ain't never wearing it out in public. <laughs> right. Why would they? Right. Why would I mean, they? other than a gift card, it's probably the coldest gift you can give. It's just yeah. like, hey, I put zero thought into this. Other than <laughs> go ahead and promote my business for me. Thanks, John. <laughs> exactly.
in the garden. Thank you for giving me a thank you for giving me a referral to my business. Now here's some advertising for my business that you can do. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing too with a referral, we, we kind of gotta take it back a step. Yeah. Is if I'm referring to you, John, it's not because necessarily I, I, I love you. Maybe mm -hmm. I do, maybe I don't. <laughs> But but I know that that you've delivered value in the past. And so now I have a friend or family member or business peer that I do truly love and care about mm -hmm. and they need your services. And I say, I want to help them. And the best person that can help them is John. And so we often think like the referral is all about us. You know, so it's like, hey, if, if you refer this person to me, I'll give this gift to you and, and this old scratch your back, scratch mine deal, which is cringy. And we lose sight of the fact that the referral is all about that person's, you know, friend or family. And so so we have to be so amazing uh, yeah. from a value standpoint that they can't wait to share us with the people that they actually care about. And yeah, I think that's a really, really powerful point you made there, Scott, is that uh, is that if you're not getting referrals, as you said, you might never earn them. But it, it may it may be because you just haven't wowed the people enough that they because let's face it, when we get a great experience with something or when we know uh, we know a product or service or whatever. And as you said, we see somebody who is connected to us and we think, oh, fantastic, I can help them out. I can tell them about this product. I'll refer them in. You only do that if, you, if you're if you really excited about the experience that you had and you think it, they can have a similar experience. If you've had a eh, experience, you're not really, you're probably not going to go out of your way. You can say, oh, I could check this out, but you might want to check that out too. Absolutely. So, so we call them wow experiences mm -hmm. at my agency. And so it's all about, you know, we, we ask our new customers right out of the gate when we onboard them, we have them do a survey and we, we have them rate us in different categories from one to wow. And our mission is to just have all wows so that mm -hmm. they can't wait to tell their friends and family uh, about us. And so, you know, it, it, to your point, if you're not getting referrals, it's not because of your referral process or your system. Just cold truth here. You're probably not worthy of it. Right. Yeah. And so you got to kind of start looking at your your customer experience. Is it unique? Is it different? Is it a wow experience? And then the other thing that I'll tell my key relationships, my referral partners is, you know, when you refer someone to us, the very next call I want you to get is from that person you referred saying thank you for sending yeah. me to them because they were so awesome. So my number one mission is to make you look good, John. Um, and, and so they can refer with confidence. Yeah, and I think that's a absolutely. I think that's another that's another um, fantastic point. Um, and and again, you know, and again, it comes down to I think it's the thing that you said at the very beginning is being very intentional about these things as opposed to just having them as another as another activity. But it is, if you think human nature, human nature is so strange, isn't it? Like if we have a negative experience, we and it only has to be a little negative experience. You know, a lot of people will run to review or next door or whatever to complain, right? Um, most Ninety-nine people who things. Have, and is that say, what? You know. Yeah. And then most people who have a decent experience go, oh yeah, that was good, and move on. You know, never think about it. You, the people who will post the positive stuff, have to have a wow experience. It's not a fair. It's not a fair game. The fact is, it's people are far more motivated with their little negative stuff, you know, because it niggles them than they are to say something nice. So you have to wow if you're going to get that. Yeah. And it's look, it's business. It's messy. Right. And mm -hmm. it's not easy. None of us got into it because we thought it would be easy. Um, you know, so it, it, you can't please everybody. And, and the other thing, you know, as you bring that up, it reminds me that these key relationships that I talk about, it's an evolving list. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not like, hey, I want to work with these 100 people. Uh, the, I started this over a decade ago and the hundred people that were originally on my list, there's probably about a dozen that still are. Right. right. And, and, and people come and go organically anyway. But, you know, ultimately, some people just aren't going to reciprocate or mm -hmm. sometimes there's just personality conflict. And that's OK. And, and you may not like that person. I was like, so it, right. it's you creating really your own little BNI group, your private mm -hmm. BNI group without calling it that and all the BNI rules. Uh, you know, it's just the 
the people that that I want to work with and that I hope reciprocate and want to work with me as well. Yeah. And and I and I think it's it's such an important thing. I, I remember to be honest, Scott, the first house I bought in the States, like uh I guess it's 20, 20, 22 years ago now or something, 20, 20, or maybe it's more 24 years ago. Um, the mortgage, but we were rec I referred into the mortgage broker by an accountant. I have been also referred into who's still my accountant today. Um, so that was a good referral. Uh, bro uh, accountant referred me into the broker and the broker was fantastic. Mortgage broker. Fantastic. He really took us through the process. He was great because we were neophytes at that stage and, real estate purchasing um but he had and he showed and at the time this was before you could do it all digitally like he had a whole org chart of where every single referral came from and who they referred and who they referred and he had a whole system of making sure you know he he continued to nurture those people but it was very impressive like he had it down to it was down to like a, a an art yeah and, and it has to be right if you're going to really hone in and, and play this game at a higher level. And I would encourage people to do so because uh, retention rates are so much higher when people are referred. Um, mm -hmm. The people that are referred tend to refer their uh, people, their network. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously profitability. I used to, when I first got into this business, I was all gung ho on revenue. And I realized there's a problem yeah. with revenue. Uh, there's diminishing returns, right? You can buy revenue with very expensive traditional marketing to to jack up your revenue and then your profitability is low. So what's fantastic about the referral game, the relationship marketing is it, it skyrockets your profitability. Yeah, and I think that's a really good and really important point to make is is the profitability piece. Because yeah, be, if you think about how much it costs you to acquire a customer cold, right? A new prospect or code. You know, there's all these businesses out there now, paid lead programs and all of that, and they and they absolutely cost a fortune and every it, because people are so desperate to get those leads. And oftentimes, you know, some of the business that people end up getting isn't profitable business or is very low margin business. Um, so that's that's another point too. If you can look at your a referral a referral strategy that actually is is better, you know, delivers better, you know, profit, better margins for you, then that's something worth investing in because, you know, just, just trying to do everything through cold outreach or through paid programs is, is not going to work. Yeah. And, and when people come to you on price, they will leave you on price, right? Mm -hmm. When they're, when the relationship isn't there. And, and so, you know, the other thing too is, is once you deepen those relationships, you don't have to discount your services, right? You're already, trusted because the person that that sent that person was trusted right mm -hmm. and the other thing i'll say about the cold leads because they're huge in our industry as well is uh it's kind of the leftovers meaning if someone was already referred to me you know now they're not going to go online or the traditional marketing campaigns it all becomes white noise because they've already got an insurance person that was referred by a mortgage broker or an accountant that they trust. So now all the other advertising just becomes noise. So, so really you're spending all that money and you're just fighting for the leftovers from the people who, you know, aren't, you're not in the referral game. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. And I, I think that's, I think that's another in, incredibly important point as well. And, and just tell me in, in closing, um, what do you, if you had your advice, for for just one thing that people could do in 2024 around referrals what would it be yeah so commit to consistency you know th this really is uh, the the process you know that i spell out in the book we look at five different uh, you know we we look at small businesses which we talked about a lot but we we also talk about leveraging relationship with schools service organizations your current customers and then social media so that's this whole robust plan and, and the system is great, but none of it works if you don't commit to consistency. Mm -hmm. And this is a long game approach. I'm not going to sugarcoat this, right? If you're looking for a quick fix and you need revenue immediately, this is not it. <laughs> right? So this is years. But, but what's happened is now over 10 years of doing this, we consistently receive over a thousand referrals every single year. And our key relationships are so strong that even if we wanted to stop this, we couldn't. Right? Mm -hmm. And that is just a product of consistency. So that would be my one piece of advice. Yeah, no, that's a great piece of advice because, uh, yeah, there's, uh, we live in this shortcut culture where people think that everything can be instantaneous. Uh, 
but uh, but you know, as you said, anything worthwhile takes it takes a while to establish, and and, uh, and it does take it does take hard work. Nothing, you know, just and to be honest, there's no quick fix for revenue. <laughs> if there is, please write it on the back of a postcard and uh, send it to me. Uh, please, I'd love to know. Nobody would be listening to me or you if they're the exactly. quick fix. We'd already all know would be doing it. <laughs> exactly. Well, listen, Scott, thank you. This has been fascinating and excellent insights. Uh, all of Scott's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, really. I'm just on a mission to help small business owners, solopreneurs, uh, you know, producers, sales producers to uh, to leverage relationships and, and turn that into revenue uh, and do it systematically, you know, have a plan and uh, and do it, like we said, with consistency. So the, the book is Referrals Done Right. Uh, they can pre-order it. It goes live to the masses, uh, all national retailers, uh, August 13th. But it can be pre-ordered at referralsdonerightbook.com. And, uh, you know, hopefully people pick it up and take action and do so with consistency. Yeah. If, 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 if you don't have a solid referral program right now, this could be the, the best thing that you could add to your add to your arsenal. So I would encourage you to go ahead and check out the book. Uh, listen, thanks again, Scott. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again very soon. Thank you.